Hello there and welcome to another episode of the D-Class Diary. As you can see the locomotive is outside now on the, um, on the rollers. So I thought what I'd do today is give you all a quick demonstration of how I, my steam up process and uh, a more detailed look at the different controls on the locomotive. So it is cold the locomotive so we'll crack on and uh, get started. So the first thing I'm going to do, I want to do, is uh, fill the boiler with water and underneath this bonnet there's the safety valve. Just put the bonnet to one side and uh, you remove the safety valve to get access to the boiler. So here we go then. This is a 60 mil syringe, so I'll just put a couple in there and then I'll just switch the camera view to the water glass. So I can hope you can see in there, you can just see the gauge there. So I don't think it really needs much more, I'll just put a little bit in so you, so you can see the gauge actually moving. But I don't want it absolutely full. See it's moving up. What round does actually say is you fill it to the top and then you remove 30 millimeters. I think I'll just show that to you and see how the gauge reacts. Yeah, it, this is full. Just starting to flow over, just I'll take 30 mil out. There's the 30 mil. Hope you can see it's right to the top of the gauge. So I'll put the safety back on. And the bonnet. Okay, the next thing I want to do is put uh, gas in the machine. So we'll take off the coal bunker, and there you can see the gas tank. So there's the gas nipple that I'm going to be putting the canister on in a sec, and this is the gas regulator. Obviously, you make sure that it's shut. So I'm actually using butane gas today. Normally, if it's uh, under about 10 degrees, then you need um, a combination of butane propane normally 70% butane 30% uh, uh, propane but today that's not necessary okay as I said before making sure the gas regulator valve is shut and then we'll put the nipple in this case from this gas canister we don't need a, 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 an adapter but we'll give it a go anyway here we go okay you can hear it going in and you'll see the difference when it's full actually okay you see the difference when it's full it actually spouts back out okay we'll just put the the coal back on the, the top and then we'll crack on with the lubrication down here so I'm going to start with the, there's actually two sorts of lubrication there's external and internal lubrication for the external lubrication what we're talking about here are the moving parts so um, what I've got as recommended by Roundhouse I've just got a, a can of um, sort of your standard motor oil and you sort of get yourself into a routine in a routine of just putting some some oil on all the relative moving parts so I'm just gonna I'll show you how I do the one side and it I'm actually using quite a lot why because this locomotive has actually um, only run for a very short time so I want to get it well lubricated so you get well bedded in. And this locomotive is now, as I said, it's on the rollers. It's not actually on a track anywhere where it can pick up the dirt and grime. Let me see if we can turn this a bit. So we can get in there. Need to get to the front one now. Just get a bit 
on there. Okay, so that's roughly what I do and I'll go around the other four, the other three I should say because this is a garret and uh, lubricate them as well. Okay, we're going to move on to the internal lubrication now and what that means is um, the, the inside of the cylinders during the motion, keeping the cylinder seals and all the rest of it lubricated and so that means that the uh, lubricating oil has to mix with the actual steam and that takes place via this little device here which is a displacement lubricator so we have to fill that before we start and we fill that with special special steam oil um, uh, recommended by roundhouse and i've got the roundhouse steam oil so we'll crack on with doing that okay this displacement lubricator has got a filler cap and a drain plug and i think it's good practice to just check the drain plug even if you've emptied it before to see if there's any water condensation still in it so we'll have a go at that i always remove the filler cap because you can get a vacuum if you just try and remove the remove the drain plug first just needs a couple of turns and there is just oil coming out so there's no um, condensation water left in the bottom so what we'll do now is we'll carefully drip in this uh, steam oil and in the middle of the, uh, the near the top I should say of the displacement lubricator there's a pipe going through with a little hole in and you have to fill up the um, container with the oil until it's just above the level of the pipe taking care that there's no air bubbles in there that's uh, giving you a false reading of the level so that's done we'll put the top back on just finger tight and if you want to know how a displacement lubricator works you can go along to the roundhouse website and um, there's a section all about that okay so we're ready to light um, the burner now so how we would do that we put the flame just above uh, the chimney there and slowly uh, open the gas regulator so and you should be hearing a pop so let's crack on with that Okay, so the burner's lit. We'll just turn up the gas a little bit now. It's been a minute or two. Okay, so we'll let that crack on. While we're at it, let's uh, take a look at some of the components going around the, the cab, for example. Okay, so here we have the pressure gauge underneath that. The water gauge. Above that, in the centre, here we have the steam regulator with the the arm coming off it, going down to the radio control. This here is the regulator for the steam whistle. That is not a standard roundhouse component. I've had that fitted extra. And right down in the middle there, I hope you can see the two burners, or the ends of the two burners. So we'll wait now for the steam pressure to build up. I'm also going to check the radio control. Hope that's in the picture. Yeah, that's in the picture. This is what you get standard with the roundhouse. Just going to check that uh, it's all uh, on and communicating. Switch the power on. And in the front of the, the front uh, bogey. So I'm just going to check. That works okay. And this one is for up a reverse and uh, forwards they all seem to be working okay and the receiver for the oh, sorry the servo for the whistle is also working okay actually you should really check that before you start but uh, I didn't quite get round to that so we'll crack on
Okay, this pressure is starting to build up, so what I'm going to do is actually put them in, in gear forwards and, and reverse a bit. Try and sort of preheat the cylinders. Okay, we're near pressure. I think the, the safety valve is starting to blow, so let's have a look, see what we can do. Forward gear, and let's see if we can get this thing moving a bit. Okay, here we go. Hopefully. Slowly turn it. Okay, here we go. There you go, in reverse. So if you look at the water gauge now, you see the water level is sort of jiggling about between these two screws. And that's just about the moment where I like to top up it with water. So I'll show you how to do that now. So I'll just top up again. Take a look at the, I hope you can see that in that camera view, that the water level is going up. And you'll also hear and see that the pressure will actually fall. You have to let it settle, just we'll pump in a bit. A bit more water. There we go, that'll do me. And then we'll crack on. This time we'll go in the forward direction. Okay, there we go again, we're off again. Okay, so there we've run out of gas, but I hope you've uh seen a decent uh, demonstration of uh, how to operate the locomotive as you perhaps can see there the pressure's gone so that's running the locomotive in a nutshell